Okay, hi there. Welcome to our new section of our series of videos looking at the balance of payments. Now, in the next three videos, we're going to spend a few minutes each looking at different ways in which a government might try to close a large external current account deficit, in particular, policies designed, in theory, to reduce the size of a trade deficit. In this video, we'll focus on something called expenditure switching policies. So what are expenditure switching switching policies? Well, they're policies designed to change the relative prices of the goods and services a country exports and the relative prices of the goods and services that the country imports. For example, a depreciation of the exchange rate makes exports relatively cheaper in overseas markets and imports more expensive when priced in the domestic currency. And if you can achieve a relative price change, that can sometimes lead to a substitution effect as consumers and businesses, people who buy and sell uh, imports and things, they, uh, make a switch in their spending uh, more towards domestic output. Uh, loads of examples that you could use for expenditure switching policies. One could be if a country is running a managed exchange rate system and the central bank decides to intervene in the currency market to devalue the external value of a currency. In a floating exchange rate system, the currency may actually depreciate partially automatically if there's a big trade deficit. But in a managed currency system, the central bank operating on behalf at the behest of government might intervene by selling its own currency and buying an overseas currency to bring down the exchange rate. Second policy, and perhaps you can visualise the diagram you might draw here, would be if the government was to offer a subsidy to domestic producers. It could be an export subsidy to encourage firms to sell overseas, or it could be a subsidy to domestic producers, farmers, manufacturers, uh, designed to lower their costs. Now, if you can visualise a subsidy diagram, then you're in great shape for the exam included in, in your answer. Import tariffs. Import tariffs are also designed, in a sense, to increase the relative price of imported goods and services and create expenditure switching. And again, can you visualise in your mind a, a tariff diagram? We've got loads of small videos on that on the Tutor Two YouTube channel. This last, po this last point, a period of internal devaluation is really interesting. This is when the government basically tries to squeeze demand, output and deflate prices to bring down the general price level relative to other countries to improve their price and cost competitiveness of domestic businesses. So internal devaluation doesn't involve any external movement in the exchange rate. It's basically designed to bring down domestic costs and prices to make a country more competitive. I suppose a relatively good example of that would be Greece, maybe in the last five, ten years. Their trade balance has improved, but in, in fact, it's largely the result of slow growth of consumption, a big fall in spending on goods and services. And obviously, that's a very painful process for the economy. So uh, expenditure switching. Here are three policies. Let's do a quick uh, bit of evaluation. So a depreciation or weakening of the exchange rate. Well, that makes exports relatively cheaper overseas and makes imports relatively more expensive. One of the evaluative comments is that if you the exchange rate depreciates, the risk is you get higher inflation because imports become more expensive. It could be your imported energy or imported food and component parts. And that cost push inflation could actually erode, in other words, take away some of the competitive boosts given to you by the fall in the exchange rate. And also higher prices means that real incomes and living standards may take a hit. Import tariffs. Increase the price of imports, depending on the size of the tariff, and also make domestic production more price competitive. But one of the dangers, the downsides in reality, is if you're using import tariffs to control a trade deficit, there's a significant risk of retaliation. Other countries uh, introducing countervailing tariffs or other forms of protection. Uh, you can use some game theory, of course, to, to model that. A low, a low rate of inflation perhaps deflation, in other words, internal deflation. Well, that keeps the general price level under control and helps, over time, exports to become more competitive. But there are big risks. As you know, if you've studied the economics of deflation, 
there are big macro risks from depressing prices and wages. Uh, investment may fall, incomes fall, consumer spending may decline. Uh, the risk is you end up in a deflationary spiral with real output, jobs and investment taking a big hit. So be prepared when you're talking about policies to control a trade deficit, to think about expenditure switching policies, be able to analyse some of their effects and also be able to evaluate them. Uh, we're going to have a special video on the J curve and the depreciation of a currency. Don't forget, there's no guarantee that a currency depreciation will improve a country's external trade balance. And you might want to think, for example, about the J curve effect and also the Marshall Learner condition. Other countries might indeed retaliate in response uh, to the use of a tariff or a competitive exchange rate devaluation. In our next video, we will focus on expenditure reducing policies.